multiplying decimals. Like with adding and subtracting decimal, the rule itself is not that difficult. You're going to find that your errors are going to come in from silly mistakes. So as you're going through this, as with any decimal operations, be sure to estimate to check your answers to see if they're reasonable. Think about 4 tenths times 6 tenths. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that the answer is 0.24. When you learned multiplication, you thought of 4 times 6 maybe as 4 rows of 6 or 6 columns of 4. This is a 100 grid, and what I have done is I've split it up where they have 10 rows and 10 columns. So for point 0.4, I shaded those with the green. There are 40 hundredths or 4 tenths, 4 columns that are shaded. And then for the rows, I did 6 tenths in red. Where they overlap is your answer. So I have one, two, three, four across and one, two, three, four, five, six down. Four times six is 24. And remember there are a hundred of these. So it's 24 hundredths. Some people struggle with this because they think when th numbers are multiplied, they get bigger. And in whole numbers, that's right. But it's a little bit different in decimals. Think about it this way. You would agree that four tenths, 0.4 is less than one. And I know that if I multiply that 0.6, the other factor by 1, I would get 0.6. So since I am multiplying by something that's less than 1, it makes sense that the product 0.24 is less than 0.6. For the how-to, first you're going to multiply ignoring the decimals. This is very different from adding and subtracting because adding and subtracting decimals, it was very important to pay attention to the decimal. However, with multiplying, you multiply as if the decimals aren't there. So our example is 0.7 times 0.8. Well, 7 times 8 is 56. Step 2 is where the decimal part comes in. You count the decimal places in the factors. So in my factors, I had one decimal place, two. That is how many places to count over for your product. So you can see where I've done this in red. The decimal started here because I multiplied ignoring the decimal. 7 times 8 is 56. I had two decimal places in my factors, so I move over 1, 2. And so I have 0.56. Now when you're actually multiplying, you're likely going to stack it and it'll look like this. 8 times 7 is 56. I count 1, 2 decimal places. I move over 1, 2. And I rewrite it so my answer is not including the loop-de-loos, as I like to call them. My answer is 0.56. Now practice this a little bit. Pause the video, use the steps you saw in the last slide, and then compare with what I came up with. Okay, I'm not going to walk you through step by step what I did multiplying. You can probably see that. I will point out, however, that a common mistake is you forget to put this placeholder here when you come to the second digit. Remember, you have to shift that second row over 
and that's just multi-digit multiplication. If you're really confused by that, come see me and we'll get you caught up with that concept. I multiplied ignoring the decimal and with practice A, I got one, nine, six, eight, zero. I counted the numbers in, I'm sorry, the, the decimal places in my factors. And if you notice where, how I worked it out on the video, I had forgot to put that decimal there. And so I had to double check up here that I had copied the problem correctly, which I hadn't, and I added that decimal in. That's another common mistake, is you write down the problem wrong. So there's one, two, three decimal places, so I move over one, two, three, and my decimal lands between the nine and the six, and notice that for my final answer, I dropped that last zero. It's kind of like cleaning up the number. I don't need it. And I also did not forget my integer rules. I have a negative times a positive, so my product is a negative 19.68 with practice B, stack my numbers. And you can see that I'm not lining up the decimals. If for some reason you did line up the decimals, you would still come up with the same answer, but you're gonna have lots of extra zeros that you have to deal with. Multiply it out, I got 864. Well, I count my decimal places, one, two, three, four, five. And when I went to move that over, one, two, three, I had ran out of numbers. So I had to annex zeros for the fourth and fifth decimal place. So my answer is 0 .00864. This zero to the left of the decimal is not necessary. However, I like to put it there so my decimal place does not get lost. It's not something that I'm going to require you to do, um, but I do believe it is a good math practice.